Hephaestus, Hephaestus, Hephaestus. In Greek mythology, Hephaestus was the god of fire, metallurgy, and sculpture. What a talent, what a talent. He was also a hunchback. Hunchback. It's a familiar word for me, you know, familiar. I was born with congenital scoliosis. So whenever I bend over like this, oh, a song from Hunchback from Notre Dame plays in the background. No, it doesn't. I'm joking. Oh, there's a word much closer to my heart in colloquial Hindi for Hunchback. It's called Kuberda. Kuberda. Now I know you guys have just joined me, but it would be great if you can switch on your mic. Just switch on your mic and repeat after me. Kubra. Anyone? Okay. Kubra. Oh, that's amazing. Let's try it again. Kubra. 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 Oh, amazing. It's the word is so wild that children used to abuse each other using this word while I was a child. Was I ever abused using this word? I don't remember. I grew up. I grew up. I grew a spine, as they say. That's a favorite metaphor, you know. I grew a spine at birth, carrying all its imperfections with pride. Pride. And you call me shame. I fostered a twisted column of bones on my lips. And you called me bitterness. I wore hunchbacks like a crown, reclaiming my beauty with stride. And you called me monstrosity. Then one day, my spine disappeared. And I started speaking with guile. And you called me normal, normal. That's what they call you. I have spent half my life trying to be normal and the other half convincing myself that I can never be normal. Normality is anyways overrated. Hannah, 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 my people. Hephaestus was very interesting. He walked with a cane, which he must have made himself since he was very good with metals. 
very good so good that all the gods went to him for getting their weapons made he must have been amazing but what strikes me about hephaestus that he was married to aphrodite aphrodite the goddess of pleasure and passion and beauty and all things like that what a dude it didn't last long but that's hardly the point isn't it hephaestus it's not that i spend a lot of time reading about greek gods or greek myths although i have a lot of time i have lots of time because i'm ill i'm ill four times four months in a year and when i'm ill i have a lot of time so what i do is ill 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 you spend your time thinking about greek gods it's especially sad in the winters on winter nights my bones turns into one of the victims of a nordic crime fiction hidden beneath layers of ice on page 100 456 somewhere in the outskirt of rejevik or some other town which i can't pronounce i take a little sigh and a moan oh loud enough to heal me but soft enough to not disturb someone in the other room my spine does a little dance of its own and i wins my fate my fate is to become ice in your eyes latte or someone's dead bed morose pessimism give grips over me as a song on repeat turns into a poem a starless ode to the tasteless infrared beams that i consume for heat consume haven't i consumed enough you must have looked at me you must have had a look why i am so fat mm, i don't know i've been fat all my life i it might help that i do a special kind of yoga it's called illness yoga have you ever tried that it's very different from barbs or anything like that it's called illness yoga for 4 months in a year i'm ill then i eat my way to recovery and when i'm fit again i do dieting to lose weight it's a very good cycle it's called illness yoga circle and moment let me let me in fact okay okay i will, I, will, i will also get you into it okay okay just wait for it but for now i will just say that one thing which has seen me through all this time is something called dieting dieting that's my favorite word apple smoothie banana smoothie weight loss smoothly poha chilla sabudana tight pajama how long can i wear this while elastic folding into my skin skin folding into my fat fat folding into my body oh oh breathe out just eat chapati cream salads dal vegetables fruits salad sprouts samosa kachori momos mm momo momo momos momos stop it stop it stop it just stop it take it back stop stopping ah uh. go to the dreams where a slim body exists not very slim but a little slim with a smaller paunch maybe and healthier i don't know what that is but a bit healthier would do so that people don't compliment you on streets about your healthiness or unhealthiness anyways just eat idli sambar dalia air lots of air or better stop just stop breathe out what is left over in all this is trauma pure unadulterated trauma 
Now, I am sure all of you are very familiar with trauma. All of you have your share of trauma. Actually, let's do an exercise. You don't need to do anything, but just, uh, you, you close your eyes and breathe in with your nose and breathe out with your mouth. Trauma in, trauma out. Trauma in, trauma out. Trauma in, trauma out. Did you do it? Did you do it? I won't check. I'm just asking. It's a good exercise. It helps me remain calm. It helps me heal. <laughs> oh, the worst thing about being ill is not even trauma. It's basically being delirious, hallucinating. That's my favorite word. I'm hallucinating. A morsel of uncooked rice. Let's switch off the light for dramatic effect. A morsel for, oh no, this is not good. A morsel of uncooked rice falls on the ground. It's not water. The floor is not wet. As drops of green fall, fall on the ground. Tup, 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 tup. A hand walks up and presses down my nose. <sighs> Breathing becomes difficult. Grains change the pressure of the room. Every grain that falls. And I find it difficult to breathe. There are mountains which grow in my, on my walls. And I can see lots of weird things like Van Gogh's backyard and Jesus walking through it. You won't believe it now, the things I see. And then there is nothing to do, so I close my eyes and rain falls over it, falls over it and turns my eyelids like peeling onion and I can't breathe. And I, and I say, please save me, mother. Take me to mother. Take me home one last time. Oh, very traumatic. Illness is home to me. It is. It is now. It's like my second home. And I'm used to living it with, with illness lying on my bed, not doing anything, or writing poetry, or drinking green tea. Green tea is very important. Have you guys made a cup of green tea for yourself? I hope you were told about it. Please make yourself a green tea. In the meanwhile, I have to pee. I have chronic UTI, and I need to pee, okay? Okay, just wait for it, okay? Your me I think that was false alarm. False alarm, guys, false alarm. I don't need to be. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You know, when I'm ill, I don't really have to pee. I, wait a second. I wear this. I wear, I wear diapers. I wear diapers. So I have to get up only to change my diapers. You know, have you seen an adult diaper before? Have you? Have you? Let's really show. Wait, wait. Ha. So I wear an adult diaper and then I have to just wake up to change it. Although buying an adult diaper is quite a hassle because you have to go to the shopkeeper and then you have to lie. I generally say it's for my grandfather who is my size. He won't know now. <laughs> so basically, uh, I am a fan of diapers. Diapers are my superheroes. Superheroes, superheroes. They are. They are my superheroes. Uh, because they allow you to go out. They allow you to do things which you won't be able to, which I won't be able to do otherwise. 
uh, so much so that I wrote an ode to a diaper. A diaper is a thing of wonder. When everyone is losing their control, it helps people to keep their shit together, literally. Never asking to be acknowledged, carrying human dignity on its shoulder, like Christopher. <laughs> Discarded secretly, sanitary napkin's brother, shame's arch enemy, ableism's worst fear. A diaper is a thing of wonder. It really is. Oh, God. Wait, can I have a sip of tea? Ah. I'm used to living with illness. I am used to having a disability. What I regret is not having Aphrodite by my side. Aphrodite, you know. I it would be so lovely to have Aphrodite by my side, but I'm afraid, would she friends on me? Would I be left alone again? Flipping, flipping, flipping. It has happened before, it can happen again, you know? And I end up being a, called a despo or a desperate man. I don't want that, but it's okay. Let me tell you a story, but before that, let me make some green tea for myself. Please, guys, if you have green tea, please make green tea for yourself or just have some snacks. I will probably have some snacks too with it. Uh, but let me first make green tea. In the meanwhile, let's play some music so that uh, it becomes easy for you to make green tea. Dip, 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 dip. Oh, hope you made a tea, cup of tea for yourself. Don't be envious. I'm just having tea, not something. I live in a dry state. Ah. Oh, so yeah, let's come back to the story. Ah. It had been two years, five months, and six days since I had kissed someone. So when she said that she was coming over, the lottery that is my body had finally run into some luck. ka -ching! There were two disabled people, some leftover sandwiches, and remnants of a kiss asking for directions an hour later. Chemistry Chemistry, chemistry is for sciences, okay? Okay, we were both art students. Two happy students making out with each other until she remembered that she had been dumped by an ex-lover for some pretty looking other and I was wet in all the wrong places. It was not her crying that perturbed me. It was the fact that despite only one of us shaving for the occasion, 
it was me 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 who was going to be friend zone within an hour oh no wonder i flipped out after that flipping 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 from one swipe to another to vulnerable to say i love you to insecure to say i want sex but what can we do what can we do people come up and say oh i'm so sorry for you you are disabled why are you sorry for me i'm not sorry for myself why are you sorry for me a never ending search you know a never ending search but i am at peace with myself now i am at peace with the idea of myself i am at peace with my loneliness i am at peace that my body is not able to keep promises i am at peace with parts that are faltering because they are part of who i am i am at peace with some sad music also at night now i am at peace with some sad music i am even okay with reading neruda you know you know neruda is such a big scam you know like neruda was such a middle aged fat man right he was a fat bald man you know this is neruda sorry this is neruda and this is how they sold his books you know so sensuous so shen- sensuous can you can you see that you know sensuous this can you see the comparison can you see the comparison huh it's like you know who would buy this sensual poetry by this fat man would you like to read poetry sensual poetry by a fat man what about a fat disabled man would you comment in the box anyways so basically i'm fine with everything in in fact i'm even fine with moon you know that the idea of moon and all the metaphors in it i'm cool with it i'm at peace with n- n- anyone not wanting to touch my body that's fine it's fine i'm at peace with being at peace with the melancholy within me you know which happens which happens with all of us and but romantic films though are still too violent for my constitution it is violence for me okay don't get me wrong i am not against the idea of love in fact i love to be in love with the idea of love i do but there's a limit yaar how can i do it finding love and my body they don't get along well their schedules are always in conflict i still remain an undiscovered gem on a map which is harder to find but even harder harder to navigate they can't read my body in geography books the maps of my body haven't been drawn there are these are these mountains masculine or feminine masculine or feminine feminine or masculine what about uh, streams you know streams which don't find their end which don't find the sea which just flow somewhere else and what about this heart heart which is soft soft inside and and which pretends to be hard like a rock what about it i don't have the answers if i had i would have stripped naked in front of a mirror and drawn a map of my body and called it the atlas and distributed it everywhere yeah yeah i wish i wish i could do that being disabled ill and fat finding what you want is not so simple boss instead of love or sex in the brahmanical scheme of things all you get is property patriarchy and parivar there's a flicker now and then flicker now and then late at night when someone messages to say i get you i love your poetry or something like that but i have developed trust issues you live on the fifth floor apartment uh, and there is no elevator i am disabled i am fearful fearful i am how much of my poetry reaches to you is it easy to climb stairs for my poetry it's not for me anyways let's leave that i live in hope 
I'm a hopeful person. I am a hopeful person. So much so that I carry a condom in my pocket. It's not here because I'm living with my parents right now. <laughs> but yeah, I generally carry a po- condom with me whenever I do, wherever I go. So that whenever opportunity comes, I'm there. I'm there. I'm saying, yes, sir. I'm ready to go. Yes, sir. Call me a despo. Call me a pervert. Call me anything you want. Call me a dreamer. I'm lost in hope, lost in the memories of the past, the present, the future, lost in imaginary lovers and kisses and conversations. I'm lost, truly lost. Maybe one day I will find someone. God, I'm hungry. Are you guys hungry? Oh, these are called fox nuts. Fox nuts. Fox nuts. They're produced in my hometown. It's a health food. They, they, they're very expensive, apparently. You can snack. I told you to bring snacks. Don't mind me eating. You know? No, no. No. Hmm. Desire, or desire is very important. Between the hours of illness and hours of getting well, that, that's the only thing which matters. Otherwise, we are always searching for purpose. What is my purpose? What is my purpose? And that's the question. What is my purpose? My purpose is to find fallen leaves of autumn and choose one big enough to write a letter to the bereaved heart of summer. My purpose is to knit a sweater of flowers and leave them at the on the graves of poet who forgot to breathe in the beauty of spring. My purpose is to carve L O V E L O V E L O V E all over the world into patterns and leave clues, anagrams, and symbols of warmth in the droplets of rain. My purpose is to outlive one season and then another. Till I no longer, I no longer calculate life using the fashionable norms of fear. Fear. You realize what fear is when you are about to die. This year, I almost couldn't make it. I almost couldn't make it. And what happened basically is that I had COVID and I was gasping for breath. I was literally gasping for breath in the hospital. I was in the hospital for a long time, in the ICU. As the nightmare rolled on, I was convinced that I was not going to live, that this was it. It was time to go, Abhishek. So I checked my phone and looked for all the shady stuff on it and deleted them. Nothing malicious or seditious. Just some screenshots and fantasies, you know, just the normal. And then I was worried about my social media accounts. I have 500 followers, which is like laughable. But yeah, I was worried about my uh, social media accounts. I was worried about my social media legacy. What's like legacy into your lexicon when you are dying? It's not every day you don't worry about your legacy, but when you're dying, you worry about your legacy. It's a mind that it's a game that mind plays with you to tell you that you are a fucking stupid person uh, because you can't sort out your priorities, you know. Because when you get well, all you want to do is leave social media. I've been itching to leave social media for at least last two weeks, three weeks. So you want to leave it because you think, how fake can people be? And they are. But then people are also beautiful. Beautiful people are. Just before I was ill, I saw how people could come together and help each other. Friends and strangers. And when my came turn, they all came in love, in support. Friends, acquaintances, strangers, long lost friends reaching out 
it was magical when you are grief stricken or because you are grief stricken you basically think these are magical moments they stay with you they heal you and that's what happened with me that's what happened with me and i will never forget it i will never forget it because being a disabled person i cherish life so much i really do i love my life and it was a reminder to be thankful about having this life despite not despite with disability with illness i was thankful personally it was a very tough time for me physically and mentally as i slowly recovered at home a little unsure of where where i was headed in life all these magical moments helped me to hold on to things you know you say to yourself that i must have done something right which is a very wrong thing to say but you know in these moments you say to yourself i must have done something right to have all of these people around me it's such a beautiful thing there is poetry out there there is a lot of poetry out there if only you can find poetry there is a lot of poetry there when i was shifted to the general ward from the icu beside my window uh, i i was I, i was beside a window from where i could look at the moon you know the moon the beautiful moon it was a full moon or something the moon you know like this one like this one like this one but much more beautiful not artificial at all so i looked at the moon and i i got lost it gave me hope and i often complain that the moon is an overused cheat tool in the poets armory they use it again and again everything is moon and beauty moon and girl moon and everything but there is something ethereal about the moon hai na there is something beautiful and ethereal about the moon and i got lost i got lost just looking at it so i'm i'm sure a lot of you have lost someone or you fell ill during the last few years and i just want to say to you i wanted to say end this performance by saying that do not worry do not worry there is hope left for all of us we can live again we can live again all of us will live again <sighs> especially in this time of unending isolation and unplanned separation we need hope we can't do without hope better times await us on the other side of the night they do they do they really do i can assure you you have all my love and more